Hey, it's Joe with Joe Lee Farms. Welcome back to the channel. I'm here today with a couple of new friends of ours, Matthew and Phyllis. Matthew and Phyllis, thank you so much for oh, being here today. You. Thank you for Good having us. Here. Glad Good you're here. here. So um, Matthew and Phyllis are going to be our X-Files interview of the day here. <laughs> They've uh, come to Vilcabamba. They're visiting, thinking about relocating here. How long have you been here now? But we're on day two, 12. Two weeks. Yeah, we're day 12. We're going to be here for two weeks. And so we're leaving back home on Monday. So I've been here about uh, two weeks, yeah. and have you seen or touched any aliens while you've been here? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Downtown, there's some suspicious characters, but other than that. It could be, you know, Dennis Rodman types could be yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, could be. So um, you folks been here about 12 days. Let me ask, what what's your first impressions of Ecuador and Vilcabamba? Well, the first couple of days, we were nervous, because the first time we're in South America, and, you know, you hear... Um, all the propaganda in the states about what's going on down here and it took a couple of days for me to get relaxed and comfortable and then but uh you know here we are into week two and it's i've been amazed i love this place um we're seriously thinking about selling and relocating um uh, there's there's plenty to do here if you want something to do and if you just want to take it easy and there's just it's just a nice pace of life i like the fact that there's no Walmarts and there's no department stores that okay, you have to go if you want something you have to go to this store to get it if you want something different you may have to go to this little tienda to get it I like going to the Mercados the people have been very friendly um, the locals here have been wonderful and they, they they appreciate us trying to learn a little bit of language in between our our broken Spanish and their broken English we're able to communicate enough to do business and yes. so we've we've really enjoyed our experience here it's um Yes. It's, it's, Tell it's, folks where you're from. Oh, we're from a, town, a small town in middle Georgia called Bonaire, Georgia, outside of Macon, Georgia. Um, we're out in the county, and so we like quiet, and, and this is another thing that's appealing to us, is, is you can get the, all the quiet you want here if you if you want it. Or you can you go downtown. Right and be, yeah, you can go downtown and get all the noise if you want it, but um, yeah, where we're at is, is very peaceful. That We're at Airbnb. It's, uh, it's, it's real nice. It feels like that. I told Matt that I don't feel like I'm in a foreign country. I, I just feel at home. And because I like the peacefulness and the tranquility of it all. It is muy tranquilo. And sitting right here, you don't hear any noise, do you? Yeah, it's, it's no, really no. nice here. Very quiet right here. You, you probably have more uh, wildlife noise than anything else. We get uh, noise from our security team at times. You've already met our security yeah, team. Yes. Our, our two dogs have been uh, very active since they showed up. But, uh, yeah, so um, is there anything about Ecuador or Vilcabamba in particular that you've seen so far that you don't like? Um, I was a little uncomfortable in Loja because it's so busy. And, um, and it's, it's just out of my element. I'm sure in time I'll adjust to it. Uh, but I was driving through Loja with our, our taxi driver and... Um, and he showed us around quite a bit. And I enjoyed it. And it was a new experience. But it's it's like me going to Atlanta. I don't like going to Atlanta. But sometimes we have to go there to take care of business. And I don't enjoy busy places. But, I mean, it was still very interesting. We went to some um, You know, Aloha is tough for Lisa at first, too. All the motion, all the people on the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, passing you. And Lisa gets a little bit of motion sickness. And so all of that input to her brain was a little tough to get used to. Overstimulating her, yeah. Yeah, the stimulation, I, exactly. I have to tell you, be careful. When you want true Ecuadorian food, and our, our uh, taxi driver, I said, take us some, because he grew up in Loja. His name's Jose Abad, great taxi driver. We absolutely recommend, especially if you're a gringo or you're coming out of town to use um, Jose. But um, so he's got a neighborhood restaurant that he all he liked. So he took us there a couple of days ago, and we got a bowl of soup. And that's all it was. It was just soup. And I ate it all. And she, she ate a little bit. She didn't care for it. And then and he a couple did, days he later. He sleep, told me nothing <laughs> about what was in it. A couple of days later, he tells us what's inside of it. And it I'm was like, um, okay. personal parts of bulls. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it was it was good. I really enjoyed it. She didn't care for it too much. But no. it, 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 it was interesting. It. And so that was, a, <laughs> that was the first food experience for us that was outside of our zone. But yeah. it was still fun. I mean. Yeah. And the price is up there. It's just the price of food here is so so cheap. It really is. You, you, yeah. We, a quarter of what we'd spend in the States. It has gone up since we moved here. 
uh, you know, maybe 10% or so um, in terms of the restaurants. Um, we are seeing more restaurants in Loja that are catering to uh, the higher end customer, let's say. And they've gone up, you know, the, our favorite steakhouse in Loja, man, they're $16, $18 for a steak now when they used to be 10 or 12. Yeah. So right. that, that's a pretty significant increase. Well, compare that to the states. Um, we There's a local restaurant down by our house, and their steaks are now 65 to $85 a plate. Awesome. So, yeah. So it's just you can't hardly even compare. Yeah, that would be like a once-a-year thing for you know, me. We, we don't go out and eat very <laughs> often don't. in the states. Every once in a while, if we're traveling, we might stop at a local restaurant and get something. But uh, we don't. We cook at home a lot. There's so a. We uh, do that here. Austin has a uh, Brazilian steakhouse there that we used to go to once a year on my birthday, and it was called Fogo de Chao, and it was sixty dollars a head, and we thought that was like really high end. And so uh, we, we, you know, we just went like once a year to that thing. Really good, but here, I mean, sixty dollars would buy four of us a meal yeah. at some exactly. of the best restaurants here. So in right. the Mercado, we we went to the Mercado had on Saturday or was it Sunday? It was one of them. Yeah. And I mean, for the price of three avocados in the states, we got ten pounds of vegetables, close to it. I mean, bags of vegetables for what you cost. It's just, and we've been enjoying the vegetables and. Um, People and think I'm lying bread. about that, but it's cheap. <laughs> yeah, it's just oh yeah. When when you so, you ask how much you know, and they they, they ask like really, and then sometimes I don't understand. I hold my hand out with a little bit of change, and they take two quarters out, and I'm like, it's surprising, but yeah. So we've enjoyed the vegetables here and the bread. Oh yeah, that's, <laughs> the bakeries they have some good. Bakeries. Some of the bakeries yeah. around here just plain. This I like the sourdough. And we buy sourdough uh, at a local bakery here. It's two dollars and fifty cents a loaf. It's six to eight dollars a loaf back home. And that's the French bakery, La Baguette. Yeah, yeah La Baguette. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, we. They're uh, very good. Yeah. I when mean, I could eat bread, we used to go there, but I don't. Yeah, eat bread I, that's something. I'm when we get back home, it's going to disappear. So. But we go out almost every morning, to either La Baguette or the Beverly, is it Beverly Hills? Yes. And I mean, we get a, a really nice latte for two dollars and fifty cents. You know, Beverly good. Hills has a great little breakfast, too. They're, uh, they yeah. have a, what do you call it? A, not a crepe, but an omelet. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great little we've breakfast. Seen oh, yeah, we've, we've done that, but we're on vacation, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cinnamon rolls right now. <laughs> cinnamon rolls. Yeah. yeah. I like it. She likes her cinnamon rolls. <laughs> I like my sweets, but it's coming to an end. But it, it has been very interesting, and it's been, um, it's just been peaceful. It's been exciting. We went to, uh, what was the bird sanctuary? I forget the name of it. Oh, yeah, um, over in um, Bayou Lodid. Um, I, I don't know the name of the sanctuary. We're supposed to go to that with the photo club. It just rains out every time we yeah, get there. Yeah, it was raining pretty good there, yeah. but we still managed to enjoy it. And see, the hummingbirds, we saw some parrots and parakeets, and there was some other larger birds. I, I didn't uh, oh, didn't that, know what the That turkey, horn. that wild turkey. Yeah, they had a wild turkey. Two or three of them. They were like the gate guards when you walk through the gate. So they, yeah. <laughs> but that was an amazing experience. And, and the, just the vegetation out that way is, is was stunning. Well, they had this one fern that just would fill yeah. uh, a dining room. Yeah. I just, oh, yeah, wow. it was huge. And I didn't realize it was part of the Amazon until we were there for a while. And then, and I said, this looks like the Amazon. He goes, well, you're in the Amazon. I'm like, okay. <laughs> who, who ever thought that Georgia boy. Just over the hill, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that was that was it was fun. very good it was experience. very good experience and um, the Amazon is huge. Most people don't understand just how big it really is. I mean, yes, it's huge. Yeah. So, what's the most favorite thing you've done while you're here? To me, it was it was the Amazon going to the bird sanctuary. Yeah. Yes, that was that a, was well we, worth it. We enjoyed Loja. We've been twice. Um, took us to the. Um, this was intimidating for old Georgia boy, but. Um, he took us to Central Mercado, one of the big ones in uh, Loja, and to see the animal carcasses hanging from hooks and seeing the chickens open up and the eggs are still inside the chickens. And, and uh, that was, that was uh, a different than going to the grocery store and getting your steak that's already cut, wrapped up, and looks pretty. <laughs> a little different than the yes. old yes. yeah. And yes. then seeing the cow heads and the sheep heads and everything around. And yeah, that was intimidating for that sure. That was different. <laughs> And then, of course, everybody's just trying to get to sit, get you to buy something. Of course, they see you know Americans they had you there. know the jelly and the, that's actually a brick, 
And it's not really jam. jelly. So it's jam or yeah. something. You can't hardly, you just have to cut it and put it on top. Yeah, I don't know cheese. what they do with it because it's thicker it's than, good. it's thick as cheese is. It's yeah, it's good. It is good. We tried a lot of things. We we we're still scared of still scared of some of the stuff we didn't recognize. But we we're venturing out and trying a lot of new things. So, but did yeah. you find the food flavorful, not flavorful, or um the sweets? Talk about the sweets since you're the, sweet the sweets are not as sweet. Sweets are not as sweet, and I'm okay with that yeah. because sometimes they can get too soupy, and I don't like that. And it doesn't seem to be that way here at all. Yeah. So. And it, it is a little different, my, the cinnamon rolls like we have back in the U.S. Not the same here. Not the they're same. They're better here. They're, they're smaller, they're actually, but they're tastier. Yeah, they are tastier, and they're not soft. They're almost crunchy. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. It tastes good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a, the, the difference is you have to get used to. Yeah. But I'm okay with having to adjust because... Um, this is what we're coming here for, is to yeah. retire we'll have to and get... to enjoy ourselves. And, yeah. you know, I'm okay with making adjustments. Yeah, we got to well, get Lisa used to Lisa makes it. cinnamon roll that's like the U.S. Style. Oh, oh, no. Don't, don't, tell, don't that. tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> she used to make them for Santiago's wife, uh, Anita, at Rustica. And uh, put them things out there, and boy, everybody in town would be over there. Oh, wow. Really good. So, um, I, I will have to say... You aren't happy with the mattress. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, but the Airbnb we're staying in is is really nice. It's it's got fantastic panoramic views. Um, the, there's a nice breeze that runs through there, and so another thing we had to get used to is no air conditioning and no heat. And the heat the the heat's not a problem. We don't need a heater, but we had a couple of days that got in the 80s, and and Close we're on the, we're on the top floor of this apartment, so it got pretty uncomfortable in there in the afternoons, but. It, two days and that was it and the rest of the time has been just perfect we've had no complaints but mm -mm, so uh, it's unusual uh, living in a country or a part of a country there's no need for air conditioning and no need for heaters and i can imagine what the utility bills will be around that. and and we did some research when we went to loha some of the furniture stores um we can get us a comfortable bed and we can get us a comfortable couch and that's all we need we can we can put stuff around that but those are our comforts that yeah, we need. And so, I mean, where they're staying at their Airbnb is in Vilcabamba proper. So it is a little warmer there than it is here. It's almost a little chilly here to me. It's comfortable. It's you know? very comfortable. It's, good it's, it's probably 65-ish right now. Yeah. And so it's, but, it, but it's a great temp. It's been cloudy all day and spitting a little bit of rain here and there. Yes. It's kind of how it is here. Some, some days it's hot and the sun's out and other days it's like this. Yes. We've heard about all the microclimates around here that you can go 15 minutes and you're in a completely different environment as far as temperature and then 15 minutes different direction. And we're experiencing that now. It's warm down in, in the town and you come up here and it's very comfortable, nice breeze. Yeah, That's yeah. what we're going to shoot for. We're going to try to get up to an area like this because I'd rather be a little cool than a little warm. Yes, yeah. So. Yes. And I think anytime you get up, you know, 2,000 meters, which is where we're at, the temperature does drop. Um, in Fahrenheit, about 10 degrees almost. Right. So, you know, it's a big, big difference. Yokobamba could be 85 degrees, and we're still 75 up here. Yeah, that's what we're going yeah, to look for. Yeah, that's what we're, we're probably going to rent when we first come, so. That's a great idea. Get our feet on the ground and see what we want to be. So. I think that's very smart. I think, um, and, and particularly because you really got to like the climate you're living in, mm -hmm. um, knowing that you don't have air conditioning. Now, that's available here. Um, you can have it put in. Not many people do um, because once you get kind of get used to this here, you just you're happy not to have it. Right. You know. Yeah, and it's an expense you don't have to deal with. No. Exactly. And as far as utilities, I've said before on our channel, we've got three homes here right now. We're all connected on one meter, and so we're paying uh, seventy, eighty dollars a month in that range. Um, for three, three homes. Hours. For three homes. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. That's for our electricity. Um, and then we have, of course, the gas bottles, um, one for each. I would say we go through maybe three to four of those a month, and they're $3. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so, and yeah. that was another thing. When they come through town, we were thinking it was ice cream truck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they that play music funny. and go through town, and we had to ask what that was. And they were bringing the the gas the propane the yeah. propane so, and i was like that would be taking some getting used to 
<laughs> That's the one thing, especially in the cities, I, people in Cuenca, it drives them nuts. You got the garbage truck that come to and they have to play their tune. Um, mm -hmm. They're required to, by the way. Okay. And then here comes a propane truck. Yeah. He's got to play his tune. He's required to as well, you know. Then you get all the little ice cream trucks with the loudspeakers, Ricos, Halados. You know? yeah. We hear a few of those, yeah. 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 And yeah. Then here comes a guy selling fish. And, <laughs> and here comes the vegetable guy. They got their loudspeaker going. Right. And then during election season, which is really only for about 30 days here, but we get every every politician, you know, uh -huh. with the loudspeakers comes through, and that, that does get a little annoying. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, so it's good to th think about moving out a little bit, maybe. That's when we retreat to our hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But uh, we've enjoyed it. I mean, we get we, we wake up to the roosters talking to each other every morning. We have donkey that talks to the roosters, and then the birds talk to each and other. And that so. has just cracked me up. Yeah. It just makes me smile every time I get up in the morning, and it it doesn't wake me up anymore. It did at first, but but then when I'm awake, I notice it. Yeah. yeah. You know, and there there's a lot of roosters over there. Yeah. <laughs> I get up about 5, 5.30 in the morning. The birds are already um, squawking outside the house. Mm -hmm. You know, all different kinds of birds that uh, land in our trees here. It's pretty interesting. So um, let me ask you, do, you got a chance to visit Rosas and Negus uh, Furniture Store, yeah? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. That is, like I said, we were able to, um, with what they had in stock right there, we found us a couch that we would be happy with and a mattress. So, I mean, you give us those two things, we're happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to use, um, I'd like a lot of the accessories to be local. I like uh, the room we're in. Uh, it has a lot of wood furniture that was hand-built. It's got a lot of character to it, uh, and mm -hmm. I like that. I, I, so it's the only thing we really want is just someplace comfortable at the end of the day and then, of course, a nice bed to sleep in. But I like the, uh, I like the um, decor decorations of the local area. Did you notice any of the hand painted murals on the walls? Oh, in the yes. City? Yeah, so yeah. Yes. Yes, we went those. through one of the cities and um, Jose just told us the story because there's a story behind it. And, and it was very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Jose knows a lot of history about yeah, this country. Though. Yes, he does. He's, fantastic. Of the he's a fantastic tour guide. They, get, they call him a taxi driver. He's more of a tour guide. <laughs> yeah, he is. Actually, I think he's a licensed tour guide. Is he? he is. Yeah. He is. That's what they said at the um, Hemingbird place yesterday. And yeah. that he gets to do everything because we were, you know, wanting him to do it with us. So we just paid for it. And they said, no, he doesn't have to. Because he's a licensed tour guide. Yeah. 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 And we... um. When we went to Loja, we also went to the park there, and that was... Oh, you went to Hipero Park? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That was interesting. That was very interesting, yeah. and a lot of my friends back home, I posted some of those pictures, and they're like, oh, my grandbaby would love that, and yes. of course, you know, if we had grandbabies, they would love it. It, it is just... Yeah, it would. It, it was just so... Um, just different. Yeah, it was, it was, different. It was, it was good. A, a child could really enjoy themselves there. The paddle boats there, all the little playground equipment is just everywhere. They've just got stuff all over for kids to climb on and have a good time. This country really um, enhances the importance of family, and so they build a lot of parks centered around that. And they understand families need a place, and man, they spare no expense on some of that. I, Hipperial Park is just magnificent. Yeah, very yes, nice. That was impressive. And Yes, and then, and then they they have a little dinosaur exhibit that was kind of interesting. We went in there, and walked around that, and uh, um, and they're still developing that. They yeah, were still actually working. still painting some of the dinosaurs, and so more they're still you know. they're making more displays. So yeah, Aloha mm -hmm. was enjoyable, and I'll get used to it eventually, and then eventually I might even drive in there. But you know, for a while when we come here, I'm going to call Jose to take me to Aloha. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of people do. Yeah. yeah, you know it's 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 a lot of expense on a vehicle, and um, it, sometimes it's just easier just to let the taxi driver take you or right. use the yeah. taxi route. Right. So, what would your recommendation be for anyone thinking about visiting here? Research. Research. Uh, research. Lots of videos. Watch your videos. We've seen a handful of video, or a lot of videos from many different people down here, and a lot of them just fluff it up. It's paradise. This is heaven. And it is to a point. There's, I mean, you could be really happy here on a very small budget. 
but you've got to understand that there's a downside to becoming here and, and you can't bring your American attitude with you down here. And I, I realize that and we've tried to be very pleasant to everybody we talk to, be very respectful to everybody and, and not be demanding. Because in the States, if you tell somebody no, they get offended and they start yelling for the manager. And, and, and we, you, can't, you don't seem like you can do that down here. You, you don't let you, yeah. In fact, it, it'll probably make things worse. I think um, a little bit of honey in your voice here yeah. goes a long ways. Being mm -hmm. friendly to people. We went to a local baker and we were buying some bread there. And, you know, I was trying to speak a little bit of Spanish. And she was just, oh, your Spanish is perfect, though. Perfect. She was laughing and cutting up and just enjoyed the little conversation we had with her. And it made us feel better when we walked out of the store. Yeah, it did. They appreciate you trying. Yeah. yeah. I don't ever feel good when I walk out of Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> I usually say bad words. <laughs> We have a store here that we've actually done a little video on. My friend Marcelo owns this store, and we call it Walmart. It's we've the been Walmart there. of yeah. Yokobama. We've been there, yeah. We've been, been there, there. yes. And it Backs everything in that little store. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Marcelo's a great guy. We were looking for a specific little thing, and I couldn't find that anywhere, so I took, I took a picture, showed him, he was, there it is. And so, yeah, and I, we, I tried to speak to him a little bit, but his his English is as bad as my Spanish. So, but, well, it worked out. He has a lot of stuff in that little store. He does. He if, does. You, if you need something, he, he, he got it. <laughs> and, you know, if he doesn't have it, he's real good about ordering it. He's done that yeah. for us. And, okay. Yeah, he's a good guy. So um, anything in our videos that wasn't true? Not that I could, you know, <laughs> I could tell yet. Um, I'm still looking for the aliens. We haven't found them yet. haven't found the aliens. I well, have one thing. And the lights I, in the sky. I haven't yeah. seen those. That I want to say that I actually talked to Jose about this. And that was, we took a flight direct from Atlanta to Quito. And he said it would have been better to go from Atlanta to Guayaquil because mm -hmm. it's closer. And we could have just got a taxi for $350, which is cheaper than the airline tickets. I don't, I haven't found that. We've, we've researched, now we haven't researched flights lately. But the last time we researched flights, no way. And the only reason I would disagree with Jose, and he and I don't disagree on very much, is that right now, driving from Guayaquil to Cuenca, and then you have to come then from Cuenca to here, that is a very dangerous stretch of highway. A lot of robberies on that highway. Oh. They're stopping taxis, especially if you leave right after your flight lands in a taxi. Those guys know exactly when those flights come in, and that's the time they absolutely target. So one of the things we've told people is don't leave till the next morning, right? Mm -hmm. you know, and then you know consider going out. So I, I would argue that, and I would argue how much the savings would actually be. Uh, we researched the Guayaquil thing over and over. Now, some countries you have to go through Guayaquil to get here. They just don't have any flights to Quito. Yeah. But um, we'd much rather do the Quito thing. Yeah. Okay. Because of the danger you now. If you're going to stay in Guayaquil right now, especially with all that's going on, I would stay at the airport hotel. Um, right. Because right. if you don't know Guayaquil, it's real easy to get off onto the wrong street, the wrong area that you don't need to be in. You think Loja is a big city. Well, that's a big city. Yes. Um, you know, that's Atlanta size. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so it, it, there's a lot going on down there right now. I would strongly recommend against coming through Guayaquil. Yeah. And, and now, gotcha. It if worked it, out good for us because we didn't, as soon as our plane touched down in Quito is when all the trouble started. And we didn't know it until we're day two down in here and then we find out everything that's been going on. We were in the middle of it and didn't, know, didn't it. know it. It yeah. was so isolated. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, was, it happened. I'm not trying to say it didn't happen, but it was so isolated and the press blew it up so big that it made it sound like there was a world war going on or a war between the cartel and the, and the, and the military and the police and we didn't see any of it. Yeah, the not whole, not the whole, the whole trip. We've not seen any of it. That's because you weren't in Guayaquil. You weren't yeah. in you know Quito. certain areas of Quito, Quito. And, and along the coast. And mm -hmm. yeah, so um, and I need to distinguish that because someone said I said on the coast in Quito, and I didn't say that. I said on the coast and in Quito. Quito. Yeah. I have to be careful of my Texas accent. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Georgia. along the coast, Quito, in Guayaquil, along the coast, and in Quito, there was a lot of uh, issue there. Here it was just tranquilo as usual, um, mm -hmm. but who knows? That could have gone the other way. We don't know exactly how many of those guys are in this country. We do know the cartel has been here in Vilcabamba. They have 
you know, I've seen video of them extorting people. Um, so, yeah, but the president's doing a great job, in my opinion. It looks like he's taking care of things. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would like to say um, welcome from all of us here. Well, thank you. Yes, Glad thank you're you. here and hope that you guys do come back. Hope you have a great flat home. Yes. And uh, so I think ciao for now. We'll see <laughs> you later. Yeah.